Hey booktube, it's Thea and I'm here I'm here with my May wrap up. There's quite a lot here, uh, so we'll really quickly kind of go through this. There are five novels and six graphic novels. Um, most everything was just kind of an okay month. Uh, I got a lot read, but the average was just kind of okay. Um, I don't know, I've been feeling kind of sloppy lately, but I will really quickly go through these, so let's go ahead and dive right in. I will start with um, a book that I technically started in April, read about halfway through, and then finished up the last half in May, and that is Aberat by Clive Barker. This I've talked about quite a few times. Um, basically, it's kind of a middle grade YA um, dystopian fantasy that follows Candy Quackenbush as she discovers there's this world called the Aberat, where each island is its own hour of the day. Um, kind of her adventures and kind of she gets wrapped up in the world and in some of the characters and kind of follows her through this journey. I um, really enjoyed this. I gave it like a three and a half stars, maybe three and a three point seven five, um, because the first half is a little slow. There's a lot of world building, which is I loved, and it's a very descriptive, um, a detailed world building. Clive Barker has a great imagination, but plot wise, um, it was a little lacking. So the first half of the book is a little slow, but then once you hit like the second part, and then from part two on, it pretty quickly. I read. The first I read the first half. It took quite a while to get through, as I ended up reading it over a course of you know the full month and a half or so. Um, but I really really enjoyed this. I gave it like three and a half stars. I am excited to see where the rest of the series goes, um, and so probably going to pick up volume two and three later on this year. But I really enjoyed this, and I gave this three and a half stars. I also read the entirety of Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett this month. Um, I've actually was listening to this as an audiobook all through throughout May. This is absolutely hilarious. This was like the perfect thing to get me out of my slump. Um, it is, the audiobook is absolutely hilarious. I found myself literally like laughing out loud, walking home, listening to it. Um, it's got some really like dry British humor, which I love. Um, basically this is um, a collaboration between Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, uh, kind of basically following the end of time, the end of the world. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. There's quite a lot that goes on, but also at the same time, there's not. <laughs> um, it's an interesting, I don't know, it's really hard to explain. I'll just read it, I'll just read the back here. The world will end on Saturday, next Saturday, just before dinner, according to the nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter, which the world's only completely accurate book of prophecies written in 1655. The armies of good and evil are amassing and everything appears to be going according to divine plan, except that a somewhat fussy angel and a fast living demon are not actually looking forward to the coming rapture and someone seems to have misplaced the Antichrist. This was so much fun. I really, really happy that I decided to finally pick this up. I know that the um, Amazon Prime miniseries is coming this end of this month, um, which is kind of why I wanted to pick it up in May. And I was needing something different. And the audiobook is absolutely amazing. Such a great audiobook to kind of get you out of a slump. Really funny if you love like dry British humor. Um, and I love Neil Gaiman. I think he's an amazing writer. Um, and Terry Pratchett is really hilarious. He's got that British humor that I love. So this was the perfect read for me this month. I gave it four stars because there are some parts that do drag a little bit. Um, and it does kind of take a little bit of time to get into, especially um, because there are some like footnotes that can kind of take you outside of the story. But overall, I really, really enjoyed it. It was a great read. It gave it four stars. And I'm really, really excited to see the graphic. I'm really, really excited to see the kind of mini series adaptation of this. And then the other uh, full book that I picked up and read in its entirety this month is Summer Love by Jill Standapolo. Um, this is a really interesting uh, YA middle grade-ish uh, contemporary romance. It's called A Follow Your Heart Book. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure where um, there's like different scenes and then it's like turn to page 71 if you decide you wanna to go to the beach or turn to page 15 if you wanna sit by the pool. Um, I actually didn't really like this. I um, it's def it's marketed as YA, but I feel like it's m a much younger audience than that, it's, which is not a problem. Um, I just, I don't know, I just didn't connect with this. Um, 
it just wasn't my cup of tea. I ended up giving this like two stars. I, there's definitely a market for it. I think there are people out there who would absolutely love this. Um, it's sold in second person, so that kind of helps you feel like you're making the decisions. And um, I used to love the Choose Your Own Adventure books as a kid. So this was kind of a nice little like reminisce nostalgia feel. But in general, I feel like um, there just wasn't a lot to the characters. And the scenes were so short, uh, a lot of them. And I don't know, I just... I don't know, I just, I knew, I wasn't expecting to love it, but I was hoping to at least have fun with it. Um, but it didn't really do really anything for me. Um, there is definitely someone who would like this during the summer, and it does have a very, like, summer contemporary feel. Um, but for me, I, it just wasn't something I, um, it's just not something I gravitate towards normally. Um, I did pick this up. I just picked this up randomly on a whim. I was in my, uh, local bookstore and just happened to see this on the shelf was looking for something kind of summery and I'm particip I uh, participated in a readathon called pages a thon which is a new readathon hosted by don't remember their names they're on Instagram I'll link them down below but one of the prompts it was to read something you wouldn't normally read so I happened to see this and I figured it was worth a try um but I'm, I'm glad I read it I don't regret reading it it just wasn't something I uh, really really fit with so for me it was only two stars I also picked up the silence of the girls by Pat Barker this month um, I was really excited to pick this up because I love historical fiction I haven't read a lot of it lately uh, this is the winner of the Booker Prize so I was going in with really high expectations unfortunately I actually ended up DNFing this about 100 pages in or so I don't know if I just wasn't in the mood for it. Um, it's something I still want to give another try maybe later on when I'm feeling more of it. Um, but I was really intrigued to pick this up from Book of the Month when I picked it up uh, September, I think, of 2018 or so. And so it's been sitting on my shelf for quite a while. And I was really excited to pick it up. It's a reimagining of the Iliad um, from the um, experienced by the captive women of the Trojan War. So it had a, I was really excited because I felt like it was going to be really feminist and um, a new perspective on things. But honestly, it was kind of boring. I don't know if it just is the writing style I didn't connect with or if it's just something I, you know, since I'm a mood reader, if I wasn't in the mood for it. Um, but I did end up DNFing this for now. I would like to give it another try um, and see if I can get through it. But for now, it's a DNF. Um, so I'm technically counting it towards uh, reading it in May because I did read like 100 pages. Um, I just don't have a rating for it because I haven't finished it. And I'll eventually, hopefully, pick this back up again at a later date. And the last book doesn't actually count towards books read because I haven't finished it. Don't know if I'm going to finish it before the end of May, but I wanted to include it because I wanted to like to talk about it a little bit. And that is The Cool Prince by Holly Black. Um, I was really weary picking this up because it's very, very hyped on booktube. I know it's a lot of people's favorite reads of 2018 and so many people read have read this and so many people love it. So I was really weary going into this. Um, I am currently about 150 pages in, so a little less than halfway. I've actually been reading this almost all of May, so it's taken me quite a while to even get through the first 100 pages. Oh, um, I am not loving it, not hating it. It's just kind of okay for me right now. I don't know if it gets better. I don't know if it's just supposed to be a lot of like setup for book two. Um, don't get me wrong. I love the the writing style. I think it's very descriptive. I think Holly Black has a very great imagination, very descriptive when it comes to world building. I usually love a lot of world building, um, but honestly, I think it's, I don't know. I just don't hate me, you guys. Um, I just not loving it and it's so over it's so hyped and I was wanting to love it so much because I know everyone loves it and it's like one of those like beloved book two books I just I don't I oh I don't love it um I I'm gonna continue reading it I'm gonna finish it not gonna finish it before the end of May um I don't know I think that there is 
I was really, really wanting to like it. I was worried that I wasn't going to because it is something I don't normally read and I um, have been kind of steering away from a lot from a lot of typical YA fantasy. Um, and I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't... I need... I don't know. I love the world building. I love um, the like, fairyland that Holly Black has built. I just think that the plot um, is a little lackluster and not a lot has really happened. Um, and maybe it gets better, you know, a little bit more when I'm through the book. Maybe that'll change in my June wrap up when I finish it. Um, but I'm kind of just recording it now you know, to kind of include it in May to see kind of what my progress is with this book to kind of you know, get it out there, kind of, you know, be able to kind of digest my feelings for it, um, and then maybe by the time I finish it, my feelings might change, but as of right now, not loving it, not hating it, it's like a solid, like, three, three and a half stars for me right now, I'm, I'm interested to see where the story goes, because I know a lot of people love it, um, but for me right now, it's just okay, so we'll see what happens when I do end up finishing it. Six graphic novels, and then I've got six graphic novels I read in May. Um, if you are interested in graphic novels, you can just go ahead and skip on over to the end. Um, but I did want to kind of just briefly go through these. A lot of these are sequels, so I don't really want to describe them too much in detail for spoilers, but I'll just really quickly kind of go through them. Um, they are in order of in order of how I read them. Uh, the first one is Domino Volume 1, Killer Instinct by Gail Simone. She is an amazing a writer. I love her Batgirl series that she wrote for DC. Um, so I was really, really excited to read this. I enjoyed it. I gave it three and a half stars, which is pretty high for Marvel for me, at least from what I've read. Um, and this just follows Domino. It's got some. Of, it just follows her adventures, discovering who she is, and you know, utilizing her powers. It was a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see where Volume Two goes. Um, but I did really, really enjoy this. I gave it three and a half stars, and I'm really excited to see, I'm really, really excited to read volume two. I then picked up Uncanny Avengers volume one, The Red Shadow. Uh, I don't know who this is by. This is just a collab. Um, this is a um, X-Men meets um, Avengers kind of collaboration. This was okay for me. I gave this three stars, which is pretty standard for Marvel Comics. Um, this has Red Skull as the main villain, and after watching Endgame, I was really kind of itching for some Marvel, some more Marvel in my life, so I ended up picking this up, and this just follows Red Skull as the villain, and X-Men, and uh, the new Avengers getting together to battle him and fight him um there are some new faces in this there are you know some favorites like captain america um wolverine scarlet witch rogue and then you do also get um some new characters like wonder man and sunfire wasp is in this as well so there are some fan favorites as well as some new faces and enjoyed this don't think I'm going to continue with the series. Um, this is the first in a series. We've had it for quite a while. Um, I might pick up the rest of the series. I haven't quite decided, but I did give this a read this month and I gave it three stars. I then picked up Thor Volume 1. This was another one that's been on my shelf for quite a while. Um, follows Thor in some adventures. He's actually fighting uh, Dr. Don Blake. So it follows his... Um, this, uh, I'll just read the back of this here. It says, uh, Return to the pantheon of great Marvel heroes. The Asgardian god of thunder is reunited with the mortal form of Dr. Don Blake. Together they must reckon with the legacy of the mythic Norse kingdom and the awakening of its immortal heroes. But in a world they may not want them. But in a world that may not want them back. This was, this was all right. I gave it three stars. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue with the series. But overall it was, it was all right. And I'm giving it three stars was actually my favorite graphic novel of the month as well as my favorite read of the month and that is Fence Volume 2 by C.S. Picat. Fence is an absolutely adorable kind of middle grade YA um, series, graphic novel, graphic novel series. It follows um, a fencing academy and boys at a fencing academy. The art style is absolutely adorable and it's just so much fun and so sweet, so cute. 
and um, it has a lot, there's a male male romance, and there's a lot about friendship and healthy competition, and it's just overall an amazing series. This is volume two. Um, picked this up in May, gave it a read, absolutely loved it, and I gave it four stars. And then the last two graphic novels that I picked up was Spider Gwen Volume 2, Boy Weapon of Choice, and Spider Gwen Volume 3, Long Distance. Uh, these are the next two volumes in the Spider Gwen series. These are just okay, two three stars and volume three three stars. Um, there is a lot of issues with this plot. Uh, there's a lot of issues with this series um, where, you know, when one chapter you're in one universe and dimension and then the next chapter you're in like a completely different dimension following a different version of Spider-Gwen. Um, so the series, I don't know, it has some, it has some good things in it that I enjoy, but overall, I just have a lot of issues with the, the pacing of the story and I think that just has a lot to do with the different dimensions that happens in Spider-Gwen series. So um, overall for me, the series is okay and I gave both of these volumes three stars. Mm -hmm. So here is everything that I read for May, excluding The Cruel Prince. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these, what are your thoughts, comments, and opinions about them. If you'd like a full review on anything, uh, what did you guys read in May? Um, as always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe to get notified of when I post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy reading, and I'll see you guys next month. Bye!